Shakur Stevenson says duck season is officially over. Oscar Valdez got to see him. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Listen, 2022 is lit. We live. Smash the like button if you like the content. I got millions of things to say and a lot to do in this game. So help me by throwing a like on the video. Now, Shakur Stevenson, he uses his social media, expresses his thoughts, recently put out a tweet yesterday, and it says, duck season is over. And then he put the, you know, like the mischievous devil emoji, emoji or whatever. And I'm, I'm anxious for this fight. I think this is a real good fight. I know Shakur Stevenson has been requesting this fight for we don't know how long, but they could have fought at featherweight. Oscar Valdez, when when the pressure really started to grow for Oscar Valdez to fight Shakur Stevenson, all of a sudden, Oscar Valdez said, I got to move up and wait. I can't make this wait any longer. So we decided to move up and the rest is history. Shakur at that time stayed at the well the featherweight division i went to his last fight at featherweight in reno against joette gonzalez they tried to build it with that that family issue what he had with the girl dating at the time or whatever he beat him easily before navarate now speaking of navarate this doesn't look like it was the plan initially for shakur stevenson per bob aram's own words Back around Halloween, October 30th, 31st, Bob Arum said that the plan was for Miguel Berchel and Shakur Stevenson, which was weird because Miguel Berchel in being knocked out by Oscar Valdez, that was contractually his last fight owed to top rank. So we didn't know what he was going to do next. So it was weird that Bob Arum was pawning Berchel off on Shakur a guy coming directly off a loss and I think he's even moving up in weight and he said he wanted Oscar Valdez to fight against Navarrete who's not even currently at 130 so nonetheless I'm glad this fight is finally happening I do wish it was under a little bit better circumstances because I, I can't just forget that this wasn't the plan and then now Terrence Crawford is suing for bias and saying the promoter top rank and bob arum don't really care about the careers of black fighters and now mysteriously this fight comes into fruition and comes into the fold uh you know i'm always gonna stay on that hill because that's what was revealed to us i do think it's an awesome fight the other you know my only other caveat is the fact that i don't think oscar valdez is coming off his best performance it, you know it would have been amazing see it just I, I guess the problem i'm having is in boxing it's like you almost have to force people's hand to do what's right and there's beautiful fights and if those fights were to happen like they're supposed to happen boxing would continue to grow and thrive and the fans would pay money and the fans would be happy and tell their friends about the sport but it seldom works like that. Like fights like Deontay the Bronze Bummer Wilder from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Oh my God. You know, he should have been, when he was undefeated, he should have fought undefeated Anthony Joshua. Since that point, both fighters have lost. And in the end, the fans lose out because now we had two knockout artists that were both undefeated. But in my opinion, Anthony Joshua, Eddie Hearns was playing games and that fight never happened. So I think even the Shakur Stevenson fight, although it's still a good fight because both guys have belts so it is a unification it would have been much better if it would have happened after the bear choke fight before the robinson consacy out fight because not only do i think that oscar valdez lost to robinson consacy he also in that fight if you remember failed a drugs test and blamed it on tea he said he had some herbal tea so his whole brand took a, a major dive at that given moment so Shakur is getting it. He's been calling for this fight and he's finally getting him, but he's getting him at the point where Oscar Valdez's stock had dropped exponentially because of nobody wants to see a cheater. And how the WBC 
and the Arizona Commission let that event play out and allowed him to keep fighting. And then when the fight actually happened, he didn't have a good performance. His face looked all beat up and things like that. And a lot of people thought Robinson Conceicao won. The WBC appointed judge in the Conceicao Valdez fight had to explain his wacky scorecard that was way too wide. You know, it's just all that stuff. This is, it would have been better if Valdez was coming off the bare chelt win because everybody was just giving him credit. So it is what it is. Maybe they can bring the best out of each other. I'm glad that the duck season is finally over. And we'll get to see what Shakur is made of. He's been asking for this moment and he's going to have to rise to that occasion. Based on what I've seen Shakur all the way, this is not even a hard fight for me to predict. I would predict Shakur Stevenson, maybe late round TKO or definitely a decision. But I don't really see it another way because the other thing is Valdez, he's not going to be able to be on something or have... Um, if, if he fails another PED test, it's a wrap. You know what I mean? So he's going to have to be extra cautious about making weight. And he's going to have to make weight the right way. So, you know, with all those, like, the, the honest truth is this. When someone fails a test, despite what they tell you, it's an asterisk by it. Because you really don't know what performances they had. Like, people, most people, I think Cannon Briggs, let's go champ, champ. Yeah, I know you like that. Shannon Briggs is like one of the only people that failed a DRUGS test and actually admitted it. More often than not, people aren't going to admit it. There's people that are rotting in prison, doing life in jail in prison for murdering a spouse or, you know, 187, and they still haven't admitted to the, the crime, even though there's forensic evidence that puts them at the crime, and there's so much evidence that leads the jury and the judge or whatever to realize forensically this couldn't have been somebody else within you know one in 90 trillion people you did this crime you know what i mean and they still won't admit it so it's no different in the sport of boxing when people when people are uh failed have these failed tests nobody really admits it most often they don't really admit it so the fans are just left to speculate he's saying it was an accident you know guys are saying it's an accident but at the end of the day we don't really know other than what we're being told so it just draws into question did he beat bear because the way he beat he wasn't even favored valdez i don't even think he was favored to beat bear Chelt, let alone punish him and hurt him badly and then knock him out with one shot you know what i'm saying so a lot of people are going to have questions about that so if he comes back and he fights shakur stevenson and looks super flat then it's going to draw even more questions as to what performances he may have been on something. So he's going to have to show up. Valdez is going to have to show up to try to dispel these rumors. Like if he beat Shakur Stevenson and he doesn't fail any more tests, then maybe people could say like, all right, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. But, you know, if he looks considerably different than he did in the Bear Chelt fight, you know, that's a lot of pressure and it's going to draw a lot of questions. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. Duck season is over. 2022 is going to be rough for old media. I'm the best in boxing history. I'm the best in boxing talk. So if you guys want that news, subscribe to the channel. And I'm out. But here at 130, there's champions who want to fight. Who do you want to fight? I mean, there's only one fight left at the end of the day. It's the biggest fight in the division. Um, Oscar can't keep ducking. It's time for him to fight. It's me versus Oscar Valdez. There's nothing else to uh, look forward to. The 130-pound division, we need to unify. Let's get it. The future is now. The Hybrid Nation 5s by Kenichi Bear. Hybrid gaming and lifestyle headphones. Out of the box, you can connect to any console or PC. Bluetooth ready with a low latency USB adapter, color RGB, and extreme bass mode. The Hibernation 5s adjust to you. Whether you need a gaming, travel, gym, or lifestyle headphones, the Hibernations got you covered. The new Hibernation 5s, link in the description. Customize the way you hear the world. Welcome to the nation. Are you tired of your YouTube videos not getting any views? Well, consider TubeBuddy. 
I've used TubeBuddy for years to scale up my YouTube channel. Now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel to the next level. Use my link in the description to get started with TubeBuddy and level up your channel faster. We working.